All right. Happy Sunday morning for the National Weather Service in Raleigh. Uh, uh, my, name, my name is James Morrow. I'm a meteorologist here at the National Weather Service, and I'm going to try to take you through a very complex, severe weather setup that we have going on later today um, and possibly persisting into the overnight air hours. This is the second briefing. I emailed you guys one briefing uh, last evening, and this is the second and likely last briefing ahead of uh, at least full package ahead of the oncoming storms that we're expected to cross central North Carolina uh, later on to this afternoon into tonight. Uh, confidence is increasing as the event nears. However, it is well below average uh, compared to what we normally would be um, only eight, to, uh, well, really six to, to even three hours ahead of some of the first storms popping in to central North Carolina. This is a very complex setup. We're likely going to see anywhere from two to four rounds of storms across portions of central North Carolina. And we'll talk a little bit more about the uncertainties as the uh, event continues and we continue on with our briefing. So this is number two. Um, and if you need any additional information past around midday on Sunday, April 14th, I highly recommend you visit www.weather.gov forward slash Raleigh for the latest weather information. And of course, always have multiple ways of receiving alerts, warnings, and forecasts for this weather information, especially in a highly dynamic scenario like we're seeing um, later on today. So let's push forward. Here's a quick summary glance of our greatest impacts. Uh, we have an elevated risk of tornadoes today. Uh, I think our primary risk will be damaging straight line winds and uh, uh, also a little bit risk of hail and additional flash flooding. We've had a lot of rain across the area the last two to three days. Uh, and really the last several months. And that has al allowed most of our creeks and streams to respond very fairly rapidly um, as time goes on. So any additional rainfall, especially if you have training thunderstorms, multiple thunderstorms back to back, can cause those creeks that we've seen swollen um, to, to uh, crest and, and spill their banks uh, pretty rapidly, especially if you get one to two inches in a short amount of time. So we'll be keeping a close eye on potential flash flooding impacts, but the primary impacts today will be those damaging straight line winds. A few tornadoes are possible. We've already seen the first tornado warning issued out of our neighbors to the west, um, and we're expecting a few more of those tornado warnings possible as the night continues, including some nocturnal tornadoes, and those can be very dangerous. So we highly recommend you have a way to receive up to date weather information and warnings, um, especially as we progress into the overnight hours, as several warnings may be issued well after dark tonight. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that um, as time goes on. So just a quick look, we are in a slight risk of severe thunderstorms. The far western triad actually is in the enhanced risk, but uh, for the most part, all of our threats remain very similar or the same. Uh, we're expecting thunderstorms to develop along and ahead of a cold front that should spread east across North Carolina later this afternoon into tonight. We're expecting multiple rounds of storms uh, to be possible with the first crossing as early as later on this afternoon with additional rounds persisting into the overnight hours. Uh, timing for this will be this afternoon in the overnight. All of central North Carolina will be impacted and some of the most intense storms could produce damaging wind gusts, a tornado or two, uh, sorry for the typo there, a large hail and additional flooding rainfall. Uh, we'll be watching all of these hazards unfold throughout the day and we'll be keeping a close eye and trying to issue any uh, watches and warnings that you guys may be notified of as the time goes on. So a few things that we're looking at, here's the current visible satellite images. You can actually see the cold front that we're expecting to spread storms to the east. This cold front has actually been responsible for a lot of severe weather from Texas all the way through Mississippi and Alabama as of this morning. We're expecting the southeastern United States and the mid-Atlantic United uh, of the United States to get into uh, the action later on today. And that, of course, includes central North Carolina. We're seeing a few breaks in the clouds, especially along the Sand Hills region and the southern Piedmont. We're expecting that to actually increase as the day goes on. And looking out the window right now, I do see a few patches of blue sky uh, right outside of Raleigh here. So um, we're expecting some surface heating and any surface heating that we're going to get throughout the day 
um, will actually help to fuel some of the afternoon sun thunderstorms uh, that we have to look forward to. And if you look close enough, you'll actually see um, different uh, layers of clouds moving in different directions. You have the low clouds that are moving almost in a straight northerly pattern, while those upper clouds are moving more toward the northeast. Anytime you see, see that in the visible satellite images, you know there's some strong winds and some shear aloft. Anytime you have that shear, you have the potential for very strong storms and possibly even tornadoes, especially if that shear is pretty close to the surface. And that's what we're going to see as the day goes on today. So here's a look at the current radar. You'll see a main batch of storms that have kind of pushed just west of our area. Here's the outline of our forecast area, at least the western extent. Um, so right now, those storms are moving just west of the triad. That trend should continue. But along this same boundary, we're expecting some additional development. You can already see some hints of it just below Hickory, North Carolina here. And that may be the first, um, at least western Piedmont um, threat for some strong storms later on this afternoon. And that main threat will be between 1 and 3 p.m. for that line of storms. But we do have additional development well to our south. We'll be paying close attention, especially for some of these southern storms now approaching Atlanta, uh, Macon, Georgia. We'll see how those progress as they push north and east as the primary line comes through a bit later tonight. Another section we'll be paying close attention to is just south of us. So any storms that form near Charleston, in Myrtle Beach will sooner or later progress to the north and east and, and possibly impact us uh, across the eastern sand hills, southern Piedmont, and eventually the coastal Plain County. So we have multiple different directions these storms are going to come through today, uh, multiple different rounds of storms expected, uh, and a lot of threats with each one of these. So we'll be keeping you as updated as possible as the night uh, or as the day goes on and some of these storms will stretch into the nighttime that can be very dangerous especially in terms of a tornado threat that may linger into the overnight hours so th this is one of the toughest slides i had to put uh put together for this briefing and it's very uncertain but using the um a, the nam model i tried to piece together some estimate timing uh, for some of these storms so please 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 do not use this as a, a radar depiction let's use this more as what we're expecting in terms of timing so we're expecting that early batch you know, remember that batch we saw forming just west of the triad the remnants of that should start to push east with some you know possibly uh strong storms uh later on today so by one o'clock expect that to be ongoing across the triad and maybe just east of the triad before those begin to dissipate we're also keeping a close track on a second round of storms and these are likely the storms that are near atlanta uh, right now to pr push north and east um, toward the western sand hills, the foothills of North Carolina, and eventually the triad later on this afternoon and evening um, with a third round of potentially more damaging and stronger storms pushing in later tonight. So keep in mind, this is 10 p.m., and this model has the main line of storms coming in after dark and progressing west to east across central North Carolina. And if that's the case, you know, if this model becomes true, and there's a chance it does, we could have some of the strongest storms pushing through a well after dark, even after midnight. You'll see the 2 a.m. timestamp here. We could easily have some strong storms pushing after midnight before they finally clear the area um, by uh, by sunrise tomorrow. Uh, they should be. We should be mostly rain free, with maybe some low clouds hanging around behind this. Um, by rush hour tomorrow morning. Uh, that's Monday morning there. So a highly dynamic situation. This will change. So be sure to check back uh, pretty rapidly and keep an eye on radar and have multiple ways of getting weather information this afternoon and evening because this is a highly dynamic situation. These storms are likely going to be a little bit stronger than what this radar is showing and we'll be keeping a close eye on that as the night goes on. Uh, here's another quick look, uh, depending on the si uh, part of the region you're tuning in from. Uh, here's a look at what's going to go on in the western um, Piedmont, Piedmont <clears throat> excuse me, including the Triad and s western Sand Hills. Uh, we're expecting intermittent showers and storms through the afternoon and evening with the best chance of severe between 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. I know that is 12 hours worth of severe threats. However, with this highly dynamic situation, that is as comfortable as we're willing to get at this point, um, just because there's going to be multiple rounds that are going to cause some severe uh, headaches as we go on throughout the night. For the central Piedmont and Triangle, a few storms possible late in the afternoon and early in the evening, but the bulk of the activity is likely after sunset or later. So we've pinpointed a 3 o'clock 
p.m. to 3 a.m. time frame for your best severe threat here. Um, and if that first model that I showed you turns right you are correct, most of this could actually occur after dark tonight, which can be very dangerous, especially in highly populated areas that may have some rotating thunderstorms moving through. Uh, for the eastern uh, areas, the mainly the coastal plain of North Carolina, that I-95 corridor eastward, a few strong storms possible late afternoon and early evening, but the bulk of the activity well after dark. We're talking midnight or later, possibly. So we've had you key marked between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. tomorrow morning is the best chance of seeing a strong to severe thunderstorm. So um, very large areas, very large temporal range, but we are expecting a highly dynamic and a very dangerous situation, especially in terms of overnight thunderstorms that could be rotating, could produce damaging winds, large hail, and possibly a few tornadoes. So something uh, that we'll really be paying close attention to here at the National Weather Service. If there is a sign of good news, it's how quickly these storms are moving. Uh, because of how fast they're moving, we're only expecting anywhere from a quarter to a half inch on average of rainfall. And for those of you across the Northern Triangle or the Triad regions, that's a welcome relief because we've had several inches of rainfall in the last 48 to 72 hours, and, and we really can't hold any more up that way. So we'll be paying close attention to any storms that decide to take the same track over specific areas. But for the most part, we're expecting those storms to be ra fa rather fast moving and any flooding that does occur should remain isolated uh, up to this point. We also have some river flooding ongoing. So if you're um, sensitive to any rivers, uh, be sure to tune into our website, www.weather.gov, and select the rivers and hydrology tab, and that'll have the latest information for you there. On the bright side, after all of this is said and done, so we're talking by rush hour tomorrow morning, we should really have um, some clearing conditions, calm conditions, and a period of dry weather settling in for the middle of the week. And that is gonna be a breath of fresh air for many of us across central North Carolina. And we're talking anywhere from three to five days of, of, of pretty quiet weather with the next threat of some active weather, including some severe storms arriving by next weekend. So we could easily be on a similar conference call as early as next Friday or Saturday talking about some strong storms as the next area low pressure tracks across the country and begins to threaten parts of North Carolina. Just a couple of safety information uh, slides for you guys. Nighttime tornadoes are responsible for nearly 75% of all tornado fatalities in the state. Uh, this is based on a study from 1950 to 2014. Um, and while nighttime tornadoes only account for 39% of the events, almost 75% of the de fatalities in, um, in North Carolina due to, due to tornadoes occur when those tornadoes, uh, from those uh, nocturnal type tornadoes. Um, so this is a very dangerous situation um, whenever there's a tornado warning issued after dark. Uh, and we highly recommend you have a safe place to go. Uh, you have power. Uh, you have a no weather radio that is powered and charged. So you want both power from uh, your wall and also a battery backup just in case your power does go out. You want to charge up your cell phone before you go to sleep tonight and have your audio turned on. That we alert will not do you any good if your audio is turned off or you uh, put your cell phone in sleep mode. Uh, ensure your cell phone has emergency notifications and alerts enabled and be ready to move to a safe place fast. If you don't, if you don't already have a safe place, know where you're going to go in case a tornado warning is issued um, and have multiple ways of getting that warning. Um, and that warning alone could be the reason you or your loved ones or your family or your constituents' lives are being saved. So be sure to have that. And if you want more information, go to weather.gov slash safety or go to weather.gov slash WEA. And that'll give you more information about some of the alerts and some of the, um, think, or some of the devices those alerts will come in on. So a quick event summary, strong to severe storms possible today and lasting into the overnight hours uh, as we go on into tonight. Confidence is moderate for this event, but we it is not nearly as high as we would like it to be just because of how dynamic and changing this event is going to end up being. Uh, period of greatest impact will be this afternoon through tonight with damaging winds as your primary threat, flash flooding possible in any training thunderstorms, a tornado or two possible, uh, large hail and dangerous cloud to ground lightning expected within the strongest storms. Uh, this will be the last scheduled briefing. We'll keep sending you guys updates via the email uh, briefing as needed. 
And of course, be sure to tune back into our website at www.weather.gov forward slash RAH. Um, our social media accounts will be updated periodically through the event. And as always, feel free to send us an email or give us a phone call if you need direct support or information. I will take a period of questions here. Uh, so if you have it, just feel free to send a question in the questions box. Otherwise, uh, I will be sure to post this and send the briefing out um, as soon as possible, as soon as we end this call. And uh, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you have a safe and happy Sunday.